clear your mind. Focus on the news. The fantasy news must flow. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green. Oh, right. And today, I have one of the strangest stories I've ever had the pleasure of bringing you here on Fantasy News. It is fascinating. But before we go ahead and get into that, I'd like to go ahead and say thank you again. I know I'm a broken record at this point for making Breach of Pieces launch such a success. We've had over 30,000 copies sold at this point. My lord. Thank you again. You guys are fantastic and wonderful and look forward to more statistical thorough breakdowns of that that whole process, the return I've had in the future, probably around July. I wanna have the whole books like cycle go through a little bit and then I'll come back and report to you pretty much as much as I can uh, at some point. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the first story of the day, which is coming to us from Subterranean Press. I know a lot of people love editions from this company and I'm happy to say, finally, I'm not telling you about something after it's sold out because 10,000 Doors of January is going to have its pre-order go live next Monday, so six days from when you're watching this, if you're watching it the day it comes out, Subterranean Presses will be releasing a beautiful edition of this book with a cover that looks fantastic. Oh, it's wonderful. So if you're a fan of it, go ahead and check it on out. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Hold up, hold your little spicy pants there. I promised you at the beginning of this video, one of the weirdest stories I've ever covered and I'm about to deliver, boy oh boy. Am I about to deliver? And this is coming to us from Russia. And it is <laughs> apparently, roughly from what I can tell what's said online, 30 years ago, Russia made an adaptation of Lord of the Rings. I cannot find any more information beyond just this came out of Russia and it's interesting. Yes, it was released in Russia and then it vanished. It was broadcast once on Russian TV and was really never seen again and fans have been looking for it for quite some time, but now it has surfaced and it's here on YouTube, a full adaptation of Lord of the Rings in Russian. So the mystery is solved, I guess? But yes, long before Peter Jackson got his hands on the franchise, a Russian nerds made a vision come true. And that vision looks interesting. I watched about 15 to 20 minutes of this before the combination of the Russian and the extremely odd presentation style just fried my brain and I had to turn it off. But this is neat. Highly recommend you at least give it a little looky loo. Links, of course, in the description down below. It's low budget, it's high effort though, which I appreciate, and it's trippy. Wow, is it weird. And there's definitely some inclusions to some stuff that Peter Jackson cut, so hey, Tolkien fans, this is definitely worth your time and I'm impressed. So to my Russian nerds, congratulations. No matter what, bringing an adaptation of Lord of the Rings to of any kind to life is a difficult endeavor. And these people had a lot of passion, I can tell, even through the language barrier. So kudos, that made my day. And it's a very just, I love people doing stuff like that. So awesome, awesome go watch, you won't regret it, at least for like 10 minutes after this video, of course. Help my analytics, please. Give me a little like, you know, give it a little, give it a little, come on, give it a little, ring the bell or something. I don't I don't even know how those work. All the other YouTubers just say to do that. I don't know if it actually makes a difference. YouTube does not tell us things, so I don't know. What's this? We have breaking news, a special announcement. Let's cut now to what this could possibly be. Daniel, thank you very much for letting me do this. Um, it's an absolute honor as always to be able to tell everyone the name of my third book in the series. I have not announced this publicly anywhere else. So this is a Daniel Green exclusive. The name of book three in the Burning series is The Lord of Demons. And that should be coming to you in 2022, unless I mess up. <laughs> what I love about that is I didn't actually ask you what the title was before you just said it, so I just got to experience it for the first time with my audience. But moving on from there, we also had Witcher Season 2, apparently wrapping production. We've had social media a buzz in all the corners saying it's done, Season 2 is wrapped. But I liked all the promo stuff, there's a nice little behind the scenes thing that dropped as well. Recommended if you're a Witcher fan. Seeing especially the COVID uh, stuff they had in place was... 
wow, uh, it seems more difficult than even I originally thought to film with all that going on. So good on them for getting through it. And Geralt, you're so hot. But continuing on with adaptation news, we're gonna just kind of flop back into the bazaar for a story. I had to verify like three times. It wasn't an April Fool's joke, but as far as I can tell, it's not. And if it is, I'll have a correction on the screen at some point or in the pinned comment, because I, Really? George R. R. Martin is turning Game of Thrones into a stage production. It'll apparently bring back characters like Jamie Lannister and Ned Stark for events that happened before the show. Okay, I I've given like this whole franchise a lot of leash in terms of like, you know, oh yeah, let the weird adaptations come, this is fine, but I just, okay, is my response to this. I don't really want it. I don't want it. I'm sure there's some people that do and great, I'm happy for you, but this is just, milking it in every angle they possibly can. Just grabbing the milk. I'm stopping that gesture immediately. Anyway, uh, <laughs> how do you feel about this as a Game of Thrones fan? I know people are tired in like all these different ways at this point, but there's still diehard fans who want more and want more done right. And I'm still excited for a lot of the shows that are being worked on. I, I believe in the franchise. The, the soul of it is quality. You just need good writers and good showrunners involved. So it's like I came into a nice restaurant, I ordered a steak dinner, and then someone like put down a really rad board game in front of me. It's like, that's. It's not what I asked, it's a whole other thing, but I, I mean, cool, I guess this could be nice, but like, I I wanted food. Oh no, Campfire, we've had enough episodes where you have to do a filler episode to just blow it out the season, because that's just tradition. <laughs> now we're, now we're fighting zombies, yeah, unrelated plot line. We have to, we have to milk it for all it's worth. Because of your amazing lang lang language translator, we can understand the zombies. We found out they're actually not hostile. They just want to live in peace. We don't care though, and we're still killing them. Ah! And because of your awesome map system, we were able to figure out where they live and kill them in their sleep. Most importantly of all, because you have comprehensive ways to explore societies and cultures, helping writers really visualize and keep the system and stories they're building coherent, also consistent, we were able to find out the hierarchy of the zombies and take out their leadership. So if my subscribers wanna check out Campfire today with choosing their own price, they can actually join us in exterminating the innocent wanting to be left alone zombies today. I'm running out of gas. All you have to do is click the link in the description and help me murder the innocents. Jackson, I know you said maybe a little less weird with this one, but I, I couldn't help myself. But transitioning from there, I'm sad to say, apparently American Gods has been canceled at Stars. Though, since this story has dropped, people involved in the show have said this is not done, it's not over, which to me in today's day and age means I assume they're trying to get picked up by a streaming service or another channel, which could likely happen. We've seen that happen several times in the past, so hey, I hope it does happen. All right, slow down. Slow, slow, slow your roll there. Hush, hush, sweet summer child. Previously on Fantasy News, we discussed the fact that Netflix is taking roughly 40 animated show adaptations and going to be launching them all in 2021. That doesn't mean they're dropping in 2021, just means they're gonna be beginning the process of being dropped in 2021. But the first of these I'm going to be covering here since we talked about this is called Use K, and it's dropping on Netflix fairly soon. Looks to be a fairly adult aimed story about a black samurai in Japan. And there's a lot of magical evil stuff going on as well. And he seems to be rising up as a warrior. Looks pretty cool. This one looks pretty strong. I mean, the like ratio on it's pretty high. So it seems like a good foot forward. I almost want to had do a tier list in 2022 after we see this wave and be like, all right, break down how many of the Netflix animated attempts actually worked and how many ended up being forgotten. And in I just love to see him returning news, we have Donald Faison cast as the professor in the upcoming Powerpuff Girls adaptation. I have a deep, deep amount of nostalgia towards Donald Faison because of his role in Scrubs and seeing him in anything fantasy related or not just makes me happy. But this is a great casting and I look forward to a Powerpuff Girls live action adaptation because sure, why not? And I'm just realizing this now, this seems to be the adaptation edition of fantasy news because we also need to talk about the fact that The Last of Us filming is officially going to begin this July in Alberta. Neat. And the last story we're covering here today is the new Loki trailer that dropped with how much I ended up overall enjoying WandaVision, which was more positive than I thought it would be, and how much I'm enjoying Falcon the Winter Soldier so far. This Loki show, the trailer looked fun, very much so in a Thor Ragnarok vibe, which hells to the yes. And I'm just super excited to see 
God, more Loki. Yeah, Tom Middleston is Loki TV show with Owen Wilson and absurdism. They even start off by saying like, this is absurd. I got you, I picked up on that. Yes, definitely, I'm here for it. Let's go. But this has been your latest episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you wanna support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, Dirk, Jan Samson, Skylark12, and Aiden Scott. <laughs>